Hi guys, I've had a few students struggling with section 21a, so I thought I'd quickly do a podcast to go through this in further detail. So we're talking about the characteristics of income from lecture one, and we're talking about the fact that a benefit is not considered income according to ordinary concepts unless it consists of money or is being capable of being converted into money. So we're talking about that section of the lecture. So from the outset, let me say this, when we're looking at section 21A, we're looking at a business relationship. We're not looking at an employment relationship. We're not looking at an employee um, and an employer. We're looking at two people or two organizations in business with one another. Now, section 21A does two things. Firstly, Number one, this is section 21A1. It requires that any property or service which is not convertible into cash be regarded as being convertible into cash, right? So at the end of the day, you'll see that's in the lecture notes. If something is non-redeemable and non-transferable, it doesn't matter. It's going to be regarded as being converted into cash, even if it's not. That's the first thing. There is a second thing that section 21A does. It tells us how much, and you can see this in section 21A2. And you can see that if we do have this non-cash benefit, if we have this service that's been provided, or we have a tangible benefit that's been given to us, then it will be brought into account, or we will declare it as income at the arm's length value. Now this comes up throughout the term, but when we talk about arm's length value, we're effectively talking about market value. So the second thing section 21A uh, paragraph 2 says, look, the value you're going to use for this benefit, this non-cash benefit, is market value. The last thing, we have this section 23L paragraph 2. Now that basically states that if this benefit, this not cash benefit, if it's less than $300, we don't have to worry about it. We don't have to add it into our assessable income. Now notice there that it says the total value of non-cash benefits. So if there's more than one benefit, you need to add them together and they need to be less than 300 if you're going to apply this rule. So you have a tutorial question on that this week. Go through the answer with your tutors, make an attempt at it, and I'll see you in the next class.